Alright guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be discussing Pokemon Legends Arceus, and specifically why I believe the starter trio for Legends Arceus in Ancient Sinnoh are not only going to have new final evolutions, but they are going to be in the form of these new regional variants that we've already seen confirmed for Legends. So with that being said, let's jump straight into the video. Now I want to start this off by saying we don't have a ton of information on the evolutions of the starters just yet, but I think we have enough breadcrumbs to put together an interesting theory as to the direction in which these starters are going to be taken. And I want to start with what Game Freak and the Pokemon Company haven't chosen to show us yet. For a lot of Pokemon games, when we get the starter Pokemon, if it's a remake, if it's a retelling, if it's a game in which we already know the roster of Pokemon, they're going to advertise and commercialize the chain of evolutions. When Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire were releasing, they advertised that, oh, when your starters fully evolve, you're going to have your choice of Swampert, Blaziken, and Sceptile. They didn't just advertise the base forms of the starters. The only time in which we get information about the base form of the starter Pokemon, and we don't see a continuation on and an elaboration on who these Pokemon eventually become, what their final forms are, and their, their middle stages as well, is when there's something they're not showing us, a curveball of sorts. We see this with other Pokemon that aren't just the starters as well. Back when Pokemon Sun and Moon were coming out, and after that Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, there was a lot of speculation about the Pokemon Rockruff, and the reason there was a lot of speculation was because we knew there was going to be an evolution for this Pokemon, but they were being very coy with the idea of what this evolution was. And at the time, it led to a lot of Pokemon YouTubers making theories about, oh, is this a new kind of starter? Oh, is this going to be a special kind of evolution? All these different theories were going around the internet, and a lot of people didn't exactly know what to think with it. And eventually, we find out that it had two forms in Sun and Moon, and then it got a third form in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So they do this a lot. They try to advertise a special evolution to really sell a generation. Now all of this is well and good. There was some speculation even before this latest Pokemon presents that maybe we might get some new forms in Legends Arceus, that maybe we might see something to kind of incentivize the player to come back and use a lot of these old Pokemon, but the presents really sold it. It was, at least in my head, the final piece to show us that there is something here that they are not telling us, and that was the new regional variants that we are getting in these games. We've seen that not only are there going to be regional variants of completely new Pokemon, so evolutions of Pokemon that previously existed that take on a new form in ancient Sinnoh, but we've also seen that there are going to be already existing Pokemon that have new forms, as we saw with Growlithe. So that leads me to something that I think I'm actually quite confident on. Now, I don't want to say I have sources. I don't, I don't want to say that this is a spoiler warning because we don't have anything confirmed and this theory is, is legitimately a theory. I have nothing, this isn't me saying, oh, look at what this source has said, look at what this 4chan post has said, look at what some Nintendo Pokemon insider has said on Twitter or on Reddit. This is just my own intuition. Oshawott, Rowlet, and Cyndaquil, the starter Pokemon for Legends Arceus. They are going to have regional variants. They're going to have brand new, either brand new evolutions entirely because of the climate at which they have been brought, or they're going to have regional forms of their final evolutions, of Decidueye, of Samurott, and of Typhlosion. One of those two things is going to happen. And I think we've seen some of the breadcrumbs placed with some of the other forms that we have already seen. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys watching these videos and hopefully enjoying are not subscribed to the channel. Now, subscribing is free. You can unsubscribe at any time, and it would do a ton to show me that you guys are enjoying these videos and you want to see more Pokemon Legends Arceus discussions in the future. Now, when I was developing this theory and I was really starting to think this is something that could happen, I went to Hisuian Braviary. Hisuian Braviary is a brand new regional variant of Braviary that was previously in the Generation 5 games. And in this Legends Arceus game, it has a brand new form. And not only is it a really cool feature in that you're going to be able to fly on Braviary across the region, but we got some interesting flavor text on the Pokemon website. On the website, it reads that when Rufflet in the Hisuia region evolve, they become 
become Hisuian Braviary. In the winter, this Pokemon flies in from somewhere further north. It's larger than the previously discovered form of Braviary and tends to live alone rather than in flocks. Now, we always get this little bit of subtext for new Pokemon. We always get a little bio to describe their personality or describe their abilities, why they are the typing that they are. Hisuian Braviary has a psychic typing, and we can see that on full display in its model and also in some of its uh, shockwaves of psychic power that they also show us on the website. But the flavor text here provides us with some reasoning as to why Rufflet in this region evolved differently. And the reason that they point to is that the extreme, essentially, if you're looking in, if you're looking at the subtext of what they're saying, in the colder winter months, Rufflet need to evolve differently in order to deal with the harsh climate of the Hisuian region. This is what we're seeing as the reasoning for a lot of these evolutions. We saw it with Growlithe, that it needs to adapt to a colder climate, and that's why it comes across with this appearance. With Braviary, we can see that when they go north in the Hisuian northern mountainous ranges, in the northern part of Mount Coronet, this Pokemon evolves differently. We can see from all of the information from all of the trailers, especially from the map of the Hisuian region, which sometime soon I want to do an analysis video on because I think there's a lot of really interesting things, especially some interesting comparisons to draw to the new mainline BDSP Sinnoh map. But this climate is incredibly harsh, much harsher than it is in modern day. And this might go a long way, at least in the canon of Pokemon, to explain why these Pokemon exist in ancient times, but they don't exist in modern times. They don't exist in modern times because the climate has become more temperate. These Pokemon don't need and don't have the environmental triggers to evolve in this way. That's why Braviary doesn't evolve this way in modern times. In the Univa region, it's a much more temperate climate. Uh, I live in New York. The Univa region is based on the New York City metropolitan area, and we have all four seasons. It's a very temperate area. We get cold winters, but not cold winters. We get hot summers, but not like Arizona summers, for example. This is a very mild uh, region of the world, and Braviary evolved in that such a way. These starters we've already seen from the flavor text, just like with Braviary, they were brought here by the professor to the Sinnoh region. These Pokemon are not used to the harsh climate of the Hisuian region of ancient Sinnoh. So that leads me to this theory. I think they are setting it up perfectly for these new Pokemon, for these new starters to have new evolutions. And I think we're going to see them revealed late leading up to the game, probably November, December time before Legends Arceus comes out. I don't have much else to go off of, but I wanted to make this video because I haven't seen it on a lot of channels, and I wanted to see what you guys think. I think a lot of the flavor text, a lot of the regional design, and a lot of the secrecy surrounding evolutions that we've known for almost 20 years now. Typhlosion's a Gen 2 Pokemon. We've known this guy since 2000. Like, this is, this is common knowledge. They should be advertising these final evolutions to allow us trainers and the, the people who are going to buy Legends Arceus to make a decision on their starter Pokemon. I am very, very confident in that I think this is a distinct possibility, and I think this is something that is probable, especially now that we have the confirmation of regional variants. With that being said, I would love to know what you guys think. What do you think? Do you think I'm grasping for straws? I think it's totally fair if you think I am, but this is the theory that when I first saw the regional variants, I was messaging my friends on Discord. I was like, guys, think about it. It makes perfect sense, and I wanted to position it to you guys. What do you think? Do you think we're going to see Hisuian final evolutions for the starter Pokemon, or do you think I'm just grasping at straws? Of course, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more Pokemon Legends Arceus theories, I have a ton of ideas. I have a lot of thoughts about the map, about the gameplay. This is really exciting. We are going into a really exciting time for the Pokemon franchise. So just stick around. Be sure to subscribe like I mentioned before. And of course, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.